In this video tutorial, we will be dealing with a very common physics C problem, the pressure volume diagram. A pressure volume diagram is just that. It is a graph of pressure versus volume. Your volume should be in the units of cubic meters, whereas your pressure should be in units of pascals. There are several different thermodynamic processes that a substance can undergo. The first type that we're going to talk about is an isobaric process, meaning that it is undergoing this process at constant pressure. Now, how this happens? You have a piston that is free to move above a gas. The atmospheric pressure doesn't change, and because the piston can move, the pressure inside also does not change. That piston moves up and down, and your PV diagram graph looks something like this. The next type of process is an isothermal process. Now, the name isn't as creative here. This is constant temperature. Now, a constant temperature process on a PV diagram looks something like this. It is a hyperbolic line and it is always concave up. Now, the only thing that would change would be the arrow direction, not the concavity. The reason being, NRT is now constant. You are in a sense graphing 1 over V, which is like graphing 1 over X. The hotter you get, the further out from the origin your isotherm would be. The next process is an isovolumetric process. This is a process where there is constant volume. Now, how this is achieved is we still have our piston, but now I'm going to make it so that that piston is locked in place. Because it's locked in place, it is not allowed to move. So whether I add heat and I cause that gas to expand, increasing the pressure, or whether I decrease the pressure, the volume is still not going to be the same it will always be straight up or straight down on your PV diagram. Also, with an isovolumetric process, the work done is zero because there is no change in volume. The last type of process that we're going to talk about is adiabatic. This is where no heat is exchanged between the system and the surroundings. In other words, Q is zero. So think back to the fire piston where I smashed it down and it caused the paper to ignite. It was sealed. Now, I put work in by pushing the piston down. So delta U also had to go up. Think back to the first law. Delta U equals Q plus W. Q is zero. Work and delta U need to be positive. So in summation for our processes, isobaric, constant pressure. The piston is free to move up and down. You can utilize the ideal gas law, T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2. Isovolumetric, constant volume. The piston is locked in place and your work is zero isothermic, constant temperature. Now, something important about an isothermic process is delta U is zero. Adiabatic, no heat exchanged. Therefore, Q has to be zero. Let's look at an isobaric process on a PV diagram. Let's say I'm going from A to B isobarically, so my pressure is held constant and my volume is going to increase. Well, Work done by the surroundings is negative P delta V. You can also figure this out by the area under the curve. But what did the work in going from A to B? I'll give you a second. The system. Anytime you have an increase in volume, the system is doing the work, so the surroundings receive that work. Now, looking at the first law of thermodynamics, Q plus W, that W has got to be negative because that is the work done by the surroundings. They received work. Let's look at another isobaric process on a PV diagram. Let's say that my pressure is 200 newtons per square meter or 200 pascals. Now, let's say I'm going from A to B or I'm going from 9 meters cubed to 6 meters cubed. How much work was done and by what? The system or the surroundings? I'll give you a second to work this out. Ta-da! System did negative work. Let's take a look at another PV diagram that has a complete cycle from A to B to C and then back to A. And I want to know if the work done on the gas is positive, negative, or zero. When I'm asking this, I'm asking you for the work done by the surroundings. So the area under the curve from A to B, I have a volume increase. 
From C to A, I have a volume decrease. From A to B, that is the work done by the system. From C to A is the work done by the surroundings. This is a clockwise motion, meaning it is a heat engine. Heat engines mean work goes out, heat goes in. So for our complete cycle that I had, I end up right back where I started, meaning delta U is zero. The area enclosed by the triangle is the work done by the system, which means the surroundings is negative work. The heat must be positive. Now for a cold pump, I'm working in a counterclockwise motion. So now I'm going from A to B to C and then back to A. And I want to know if the work done by the gas is positive, negative, or zero. So from A to B, that is the work done by the system. From C to A, that is the work done by the surroundings. Since the surroundings is inside the triangle, that is positive. The system is going to be negative. Counterclockwise, this is a cold pump. For a cold pump, work goes in and heat comes out. So think about your refrigerator. When your feet are really cold, you can put them underneath the fridge because that is where your heat exhausts. Work goes in, heat comes out, and your feet are happy.